Hi guys! So today I thought we would create this really simple, really easy um, watercolor galaxy wolf um, background. And uh, it's really easy to do and I will show you how to do that today. So what I'm using today is the Academy Wall watercolor pad. And this was from Medim online, I think. I bought this on Amazon.ca in Canada. It's 10 by 7 and it's 100% cold pressed watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton, so that's really good because it will hold the water in and it will allow us to lay some colors down. And as you can see, it'll keep the vibrancy of the paper. Um, now I've used this a few times. I was using the Paul Rubens uh, watercolor block. So this is also a water watercolor block. So it's glued on all four sides. And you just take a knife and you slide it in there to remove your sheet. Um, but this was this is what we'll be using for today. So we'll be using the Winsor & Newton watercolors for the background and then some white gouache and some black gouache. If you don't have the gouache, you can use white watercolor or gel pen or whatever paint marker that you want. And same goes with the um, silhouette here. So if you guys wanna see me do this, um, then please keep watching. Okay, so we're gonna start mixing our watercolors first for our background color here. And I will be using the Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors for this. And I've got just a little dab of water in these four um, compartments here because before we go in to do our uh, picture, it's nice to have your colors pre-mixed beforehand. So we're gonna do that right now. And I'm thinking something like purpley pink, like a nice purpley pink galaxy. So I'm thinking like a nice purpley pink galaxy might look nice. So I'm going to start by mixing a purple. So we're going to go into this. This is dioxazine violet. And I'm just going to put some of that in there. We want a good amount of pigment because we want it to be nice and dark. Um, and this is mauve. some mauve in here. And I'm just going to put a hint of that dioxazine violet in there maybe. And a little bit more mauve. So I like that. And then I'm thinking um, a little bit of a blue, like a lighter blue. So maybe we'll go in with some cerulean blue hue. Nope, this one. Oh, it's turquoise. Maybe we'll mix the two of them together. Some cerulean blue hue and some turquoise. Because I just want a little bit of like lighter blue here and there. And then we'll put um a little bit of turquoise in there too. And then I think I'm gonna make a bit of a darker color. So I'm gonna take some lamp black, a little bit of that. And I think a little bit of uh, Prussian blue. just to kind of blue it up a little bit. Um, and I might throw in maybe some indigo in there. And then maybe just a hint of this dioxazine violet just to get a little bit of purple in there to go with the theme. gonna throw a little bit more mauve in here. You know what, I might do like a bright pink. 
pink too now that I'm thinking of it. Um, just to throw in some hint, hints of bright pink here and there. So I'm just going to take some clean water. And I'm going to take, I think this is permanent rose. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that and we can just kind of throw that in where we want. There, so I think I like our color choices. This might go good or this might look weird. All right. So our next step, um, I've just got my little outline uh, of the wolf. So we're going to go in and wet the inside of it and then drop our colors in. So that will be our next step. So we're doing sort of a wet on wet technique. And this is on cold pressed 140 pound watercolor paper. So it will really um, soak up the water that we're putting on it. So you can put a fair amount on. Sometimes I find you need to put, um, you know, two layers of water by the time it soaks into the paper. Now I went outside a little bit. I'm just going to try to get pick up some of that water there. I'm going to take this brush just for some of the smaller spots. This will be the brush that I go in and drop our color in with. And if you go outside the lines and it bleeds a little bit, that's fine. It's just going to make yours a little bit different, a little bit new unique. And you might like that look of it bleeding. You might be going for that and that's great. There's no one, one way to do this. Now I'm just laying in some more water all in the middle. Because I want it to be nice and saturated. Now you don't want there to be puddles, but you want it to be nice and shiny. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but as I tilt it, there's no water running, but it's nice and shiny. So this is, this is good. This is what we want. Okay. So I think I'm going to go in with our purple first. And I'm just going to start dropping it in, and you can just drop this in wherever you want it. There's no rhyme or reason. And if you get little splatters, that's okay. You can either leave them or pick them up. Okay, and I'm going to go in with some of that dark color. spots where it's nice and bright and I might throw some in here. Okay, and then I'm going to take some of that blue that we had and just kind of pop that in in a couple of places. Maybe let it mix a little bit. And then I'm going to start taking a really dark color and I'm going to put it along where I want it to be really dark. Oops. Just on some spots on the outside. Now some of our color is starting to, to bleed a little bit, um, to pile. So I'm just going to pick that up. 
And I'm just going to continue to drop in some of our colors. Now this is from the paper warping, so that's fine. It'll just make it look a little bit uh, blended in some places if you like that. Great. So I kind of like how this is turning out and I'm just going to kind of drop in a little bit more here and there and just kind of move it around. So it's kind of uh, filling in the spots that I want it to. And if we get some blooms or some backwashes, that's okay. I don't mind that. Um, if you mind that, you might want to be careful how much water you're putting down onto the paper. But I don't really mind that. I'm just going to kind of let let it go where it wants to go. Now I'm just going to concentrate little bit more of this just here and there just to bump up some of these colors so I'm just getting all the water out of my brush and I'm picking up just mostly pigment and I'm just dropping it in where I want it to be a little bit brighter and then some of our darker purple because I feel like we've lost some of that dark purple. And I'm just going in with a dry brush again, picking up any extra. And I think I'm just going to go back in with this um, darker color. And just kind of darken up a little bit more of it in some places. how our little wolf is turning out. And if you make a mess and go outside the lines, that's fine. This is watercolor, so it can it will lift. So you can always come back after and just lift some of it up.
So I think we're gonna leave him at this for now and let him dry. And then we'll come back and do some more on top of him, okay? Okay, so now that our wolf is dry, you can see how vibrant the colors do stay on this paper, which I love. And they blended really nicely um, without spreading too much. Um, so I really like this paper for that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our stars to the background. So I've kind of traced out where I want my other little wolf to go, um, but I'm not gonna really bother, you know, to to mask him out or anything like that because it doesn't matter if a little bit of the stars get on top of him um, because we're just gonna go over top with black gouache anyway. So I'm gonna be using the Windsor & Newton white gouache for this. This is zinc white. If you don't have gouache, you can use white watercolor, you can use gel pen, you can do, you know, basically whatever you want. And I'm going to be using this, um, it is a water brush, but I like to use it for stars. And I just get, you know, the end of it wet and I kind of go like this and make this motion so that the paint splatters onto the subject. So that's what we're going to do here. But I'm going to make up some of our white gouache first. And you want it to be just slightly more thick than thin so that uh, when it does splatter out, the stars aren't too translucent. get this nice and wet and pick up some of our gouache mix it in there really well and we're just gonna start splattering so you want to remember that stars are everywhere but they do tend to cluster in little areas so I'll do some clusters and I'll kind of put it all over but this is the fun part. When you start making your galaxy background look like a galaxy. And the further away you are from the paper, the bigger they're going to be. The closer you are to the paper, the smaller they're going to be. So if you want to get some big ones in there, just hold it back a little bit. Now I'm going to start concentrating them in just a couple of spots. So I'm starting to like that, but I would like to go in and add um, some bigger splotches. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to, I've got paint all on my fingers, so we'll wipe that off first. And then I'm just going to take this, I might need to make a little bit more of it, but I'm just going to. Yeah, we're just going to make up a, a little bit more. There's not enough there.
Well, this is pretty nice and wet. I'm just going to tap some bigger stars on there. And this will just give us some bigger ones. There. So while these ones are still wet, I'm just going to take off what I can inside our wolf. You don't have to do that, but just so they don't, uh, if you're not using gouache and you're just using maybe black watercolor or something like that, they might show up, so you might have to put a couple more layers. So we'll let this dry and then we'll come back and fill in our little wolf. Okay, so now we're gonna mix up our black gouache. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. And for this, I'm using the um, M-Gram Lamp Black Gouache. And again, if you don't have this, you can use any other gouache that you have, or you can use um, just black watercolor to fill this in. And I'm going to mix it a little thicker at first because we want it to be pretty opaque. And we're just going to draw in our little wolf. So I'm going to do him, he's sitting on a little cliff here. So I'm going to get all So you can see how nice and black and opaque this gouache is. It's really nice. And if yours doesn't have good coverage, you can always go over it a couple more times. You can always adjust it to whatever you want. If you want this to be in a different color, by all means, you can make them be in a different color. It's completely up to you. You are the master of your art. So I'm just going to go down to a smaller brush here. This was a an 8 and this is a 4. So I'm just going to go down to a 4 just to fill in the wolf part because it's a little bit smaller and there's a little bit a um, little bit of details with the hair. So I'm just taking my brush and doing some little tiny strokes just to make it seem like there's hair at the back of him. And then I'm just going to fill it in. And same with under his belly here. Just some little hair strokes.
just trying to follow my outline as best I can. It might not be perfect, but... Now I really like this M Graham gouache because it is uh, quite opaque, so it does cover up a lot. All right, and I'm just gonna kind of go and make some little fur strokes here, like we did on the other side. And that's our little wolf. So I hope you enjoyed creating this galaxy wolf with me today. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and give a like to the video and hit the notification bell so that you are notified when I upload videos. I hope you guys try this out for yourself. And again, you can use whatever colors you want. Um, it doesn't have to be like this. This is just what spoke to me today. Um, but thanks for watching.